Changing your strings shouldn't be a hassle. The Pro Winder is a single tool that performs the jobs of three. It winds, cuts, and pulls out stubborn bridge pins. Four Premier Guitar hanging out in Nashville's Mercy Lounge with Jonathan of Torch. Jonathan, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Happy to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. Jonathan is much more than just a guitar player. He obviously play, used to play bass in the band. He's got some other things he's going to talk to us about uh, in terms of production and uh, gear-wise, but let's just start right here with the guitar that has many uh, nods of familiarity, but definitely its own thing. So talk to me, Jonathan. So this was something um, I, uh, I came up with with a good friend, Joe Kuntz. He was uh, in some South Florida bands like Cavity. Uh, he, he used to be uh, in the band AAA, like really raunchy punk stuff. And uh, he just got really into building guitars. And I played some of his Moz rights and a couple of other guitars that he made. And they were outstanding. And uh, on the record that we just put out, Admission, I had done a lot of stuff with this whole deal. Yeah. And uh, it was a lot to do with uh, a good friend of mine, Max, lent me a uh, is it, yeah, GNL F100, and it has this, you know, a GNL, I guess, trim that really was too much fun to play, and it ended up, <laughs> like, really doing a lot on the record, and later I'm like, shit, I need to do that live. Yeah. And Joe had offered to maybe <clears throat> collaborate, or, like, you know, maybe, like, trade studio time for a guitar, I'm like, okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, super kind dude, Robot Graves, he sent me this snack. Uh, and I was like, Joe, I have a neck, let's make the body. And he had made a Moss right that I really liked, but I'm into the guitars with this, you know, kind of carve and contouring and just big on like not, you know, being uncomfortable live. Yeah. You know? Looks like an old muscle car. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sexy curves. So, yeah, very, you know, I'm from Miami, so. Yeah, um, so I incorporated, you know, the Moss right stuff that he had done that I've really been a fan of, the neck, which has a certain tone and. I guess your mind's at ease when you're traveling, uh, you know, checking in stuff. You never know how it's going to come out on the other yeah. side. But uh, always loved the L500L from Bill Lawrence. The Mastery was something I was uh, turned on to by my friend Bob, um, Bob Bruno from Best Coast. I played a Jaguar that he had a Mastery on. And I'm like, shit. I, could, I was like that guy that maybe played the guitar. You told him to play a little too long. Yeah. But I just love, you know, that, the fact that it's like there's a certain glide. It stays in tune great. Um, and so yeah, and it has a tone. I will say it has like a tone. You know? Really? Yeah. I know that you've always kind of been another Florida company ECG. Yeah, yeah. With the aluminum necks, like, what do you like about that? Obviously, the travel-wise and the consistency sake, but tonality. What, what do you dig about that? I think there's a certain depth. There's like a whoa, you know, like ooh. Yeah. like this, like it's almost like if you're in the studio and you put a, a like a two or four dB boost at like a. 40 or 35 hertz bell on a bass or something. You always have that glow wherever you're at on the neck. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this kind of has that and it's a certain sustain that's really, I guess, signature of, of, the, uh, of the aluminum style necks. But uh, yeah, I mean, the guitar is definitely designed after like what I needed to translate the stuff that was done on the record with multiple guitars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the, the stuff was uh, pretty pretty intuitive. Other stuff, like on the spot, it was fun to like figure out. Like, you know, literally he, he put a piece of paper on top of it, a uh, guitar body, before staining it and all that, and like we d drew the pick art on. And <coughs> it was a cool collaboration with my friend, you know? What uh, body wood did you end up going with here? This is mahogany. Okay. Yeah, he does all the Kuntz custom guitars. They're all mahogany. Okay. I mean, he does whatever, like, or like, you know, you can do like uh, maple tops or whatever. But I think like the default wood he gravitates towards is mahogany, which mm -hmm. I have no problem yeah. with. Yeah, you know. And what do you really dig about the L500 and the bridge there? It's just like you can get a ton of gain, but you there's a good balance between body tone and output. So you're not exchanging high gain for body thickness and clarity. Uh, the first time I ever heard one of these, so it's in uh, an older Gibson, which I believe they were issued. I don't know if it was the Marauder, or there was a, a certain line of Gibsons that were mm -hmm. um, issued from factory with the, uh, Bill Lawrence. And once I heard that, I was tracking actually our front of house guys, old band with our bass player. I was just changed. I'm like, 
the clarity, no matter how much gain, the dynamics. It's not it's just as saturated or like aggressive, yet as natural as like anything. I don't know. It was just like aggressive, saturated, clear, dynamic. No, like it's not noisy. Um, the percussiveness, you know, playing heavier stuff and like retaining like a nice compression that was like very loose, very light. You yeah, know? it wasn't like overly. <laughs> Yeah, you that's know. one thing I've noticed, I've seen you guys numerous times live and just listen to the records, is all that is there, and then obviously the heaviness and the, the density, but it, there's also an articulation yeah, that it comes through. I mean, and then we'll get to this stuff, <laughs> which was, uh, <laughs> it was just like a voyage, going from guitar, I mean, sorry, from bass to guitar, I was just like, I, w I don't like anything. I'm like, I don't like any of this shit. Yeah. You know, like, so it's just like from the ground up, I'm like, damn, it's like back to square one. You know? Well, let's keep moving along. Okay, so uh, what's the next guitar that you kind of right, go so to on, on a night-to-night -night basis? <laughs> go over here. Okay, so this is a very, 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 very important guitar. Uh, good friend Sasha Dunable, um, of Dunable, obviously, had me come over. This is dog here, my dog Uli. <laughs> He's fuzzy. Um, he, he once uh, said, hey, if you're ever in town, let me know and uh, you can come by and check out some stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. And uh, I was living in LA for about, oh, just about three years, a little under three years. And he, he hit me up out of the blue after a tour. It was the first tour I had done on guitar and I had a certain guitar, uh, I don't know if you bleep it or whatever. I did a certain guitar that was really awesome. Uh -huh. it's, I thought it was like, hey, that's the one. Yeah. I went through the whole tour knowing like, it's not the one. And I was like, shit. It's like being with a girlfriend that you know you gotta break up with. But yeah. You don't know how or when. <laughs> like, yeah, and you're like, and then like, you know, I guess every night, halfway through the set, we switch guitars. And then I would realize like, wow, this, you know, Fender was nice enough to send me a Telecaster. I'm like, the scale length, the neck, it just felt right. Yeah. So luckily, Sasha hit me up one day. Um, I was like, he's invited me over. I'm like, hey, I'm actually working on these heads. Maybe I can bring over the head too. He's like, dude, come on. Yeah. So we hung out. He tried the amp, I tried this guitar, and I gotta tell you, this was, this is the first thing that felt right. And it's still like when I, you know, I'm on it, you know, it's just like, okay. It's just very intuitive, it doesn't feel alien. It's, it's weird because going from bass to guitar, the guitar I had for a while, it just felt like a ukulele or something. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't that much shorter, it's just, yeah. you know, like a little shorter scale. But I wasn't into it, to be honest. And this sounded right, it felt right. Though even the body, the way the wood resonates, this is like forever not going anywhere. And Oh, go ahead, so go no, ahead. No, no, and I'm actually, you know, having committed so much of that trem stuff to the record, um, we're actually, uh, he's, he's almost done with another Cyclops, um, some really cool colors, you know? <laughs> and uh, it's gonna have a mastery as well. Killer. Like I like, got bit by, the mastery snake and now you're done oh, down that warm hole. at least i just need like and i like uh, i'm like i want to be playing this guitar i want to be playing both but the mastery it just it put me in a corner yeah you know and uh, i understand yeah. that but uh do you know what the actual scale length on this and i that believe e, it's the other one it's is? uh it's like a fender scale okay so it's I, a little bit longer yeah just but and it, it like and the way he sets where he sets a bridge helps with tuning there's certain like things that really don't work on shorter scales for us yeah you know the low tuning the octave tuning yep it's really it's a pain in the ass but um you know even some higher stuff like if you do this thing where like the d drones over the g like it just to me anything shorter than a fender scale it has a problem staying in tune mm. you know mm -hmm. but i think you know this is a perfect example of an ex and i i have this knob in my backpack i gotta i was gonna put it on sorry <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um but i do have it um, but yeah, I just think it's an exciting time with gear in general because you have a lot of people have spent a lot of time on the road making records, um, just really honing in on what they feel should be available now. Yeah. You know, whether it's guitars, pedals, amps, cabs, you know, drum companies. It's just a really exciting time yeah. where you pick things. I, I picked this thing up. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, that's it. This is it. And then I was like, just waiting. Like, he's like, yeah, that's yours if you want it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And you know, I mean, shit, wrote a bunch of songs and it's on a record now and tracked all my guitars with this, you know, like all the rhythm guitars, some of the lead stuff. And yeah, I'm just excited for the other one with this. I don't want to touch this. This is like a special, yeah. you know, like very special guitar. Um, 
but yeah. And those are the Bill Lawrence's again? Uh, well, this is one of his, I believe they're either the Slug Wolves or the oh, Dire, right. dire Wolves yeah. or something. I might be butchering that, sorry. But uh, the L500L okay. again, it's just, it feels, it sounds right to me. It's consistent. Yeah, you and know. it's just, as it has a nice compression, but it's open. It's not like fizzy, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, it, like, it lets a guitar roar. You know, Let's do whether thing. you play clean or, or heavily distorted or somewhere in between, it cleans up real well. It's nice. And uh, what strings do you guys run? We on use this? Dunlop. Okay. Uh, they're very kind to us and uh, they're patient with our <laughs> ridiculous gauge stuff that we do. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I always have to look at the box. It's yeah. like 70, 52, 46. And then like 17, 15, 11, uh, 10 or something. Okay. Or maybe it's like almost like 17, a, 13, 10. So it's like, it's like a like, hybrid of like t bottom heavy, top light. Yeah, yeah. We experimented with like other brands like 75, 80. It got kind of ridiculous for a second, but I don't know, man. The Dunlops, the way they wind them or something. We're like the most in tune we've ever been. It sounds right. They last like a great amount of time. You know, there's no surprises very consistent in a good way and uh yeah they're the sound of the record sound live and i couldn't be happier cool you know and i potentially this is the only pothole i think we could run into jonathan because we're already running we're i feel like we're on a good level right now but do you care to divulge any tuning information to the audience yeah i mean like you know we, we, we it's not a problem uh there's another uh we have two tunings but the one i have no problem talking about i guess yeah. is uh basically we tune standard but the uh, the low string is actually an octave of the fifth string, which is, as we all know, an A. So it's A A D G B E. So not Simple. that yeah, you not know, that hidden. Yeah, just like whoop octave and good luck, stay in tune. You know, <laughs> get done lots. Yeah, it's just like I feel, you know, I've seen bands um, that use octave tunings, and sometimes like you're kind of like tweaking it a little bit as you're getting through the song. Sometimes yeah. you're like, ooh, this thing's ready. And other times you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be rough, you know. So yeah. we did TV recently, and uh, yeah, Seth Meyers. It, yeah, luckily the song we played, I'm like, I'm like high strings. So I'm like, whoo, I have no stress. <laughs> and then uh, we switch over and we did the other, the you know, online exclusive, which yeah. is the bomb string, and that my guitar for that stays in tune very well. Which yeah, what, I guess we'll go to that one. Well, now. yeah, explain the bomb string as we go okay. to the third guitar. Yeah, yeah. Because that's something I, I noticed gets dropped or gets associated with you specifically. In yeah, it's, it's definitely jointly. a sound you don't you don't forget. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Well, it started with floor. Um, yeah, it started with floor, and they were, they were just like practicing, and a string kind of popped, and Steve or Anthony or both just, I think it happened to one of the guitars. Another guitar player was like, "Man, that sounds like lightning." So for years, they were like tweaking it. They were kind of like hovering around different tensions, and then uh, um, Henry Wilson, the drummer on the self-titled and Ablation, the last record they put out, he was like, "All right, let's." Let's organize this shit. Let's figure this out. We, let's make it consistent, yeah. you know? So they just came up with, it's, a, it's just like the other tuning, but um, got my strap blocks here. Uh, <laughs> like it, it's the same as, you lose a string, but it's like, at least for, there's different variants. They tune a certain way, we tune a certain way, uh -huh. but it's kind of similar. So it's like A, A, D, G, B, we lose the high E. Uh -huh. And then this is uh, something that's taken a long time to figure out, but I think we have it. <laughs> you know, and it, you can, it can be heard on, on records and live. But um, yeah, it's just a 70 also. So this guitar is actually, you know, to me it's pretty silly. Yeah. But it's like 70, 70, 52, 46. Man. And then we jump down to like, I guess like 13, 10 or like 17, 11. Okay. Something like that. Um, but yeah, it gets a certain sound. What uh, song does this get brought out for? Um, for songs? Yeah, for the, on the new record, it's uh, What Was, um, Inferno, I think that's it for the new record yeah i think so and then like other ones like charge of the brown recluse is the one that okay. you know an older People. one and uh there's other ones like uh oh annihilation affair from the restarter record uh, yeah yeah undone is another one we play live it's more of an upbeat but it's really fun to play and uh yeah everybody's been very uh, respectful and uh, they know that it came from the floor camp and People do different different variations, but it's cool that you know it's it's a unique South Florida thing. Yeah, you know, by it's it's a it's a family thing. Yeah, you know, it's cool. Keep it within the family. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of family, you got a new family of gear here, dude. This is exciting for you. So first yeah. off, congratulations. Thank you. But thank you. Second of all, tell us about your new company. Okay, so um, this all came. 
it's all came to be um, switching from uh, basic guitar. I just I was used to like sound pressure, air moving, yeah. feeling it, having something that like grip the notes. And uh, you're SVT guy, right? Yeah, yep. And uh, we still have it up there till maybe get another head up there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's you know it's uh, every once in a while it's it's like you know waves a flag and uh, we have to help them out a little bit. But yeah, tried and true, it's always you know up there with us. But um, the first thing we did was actually the bass pedal, uh, the NX uh, bass channel. And it's two pedals in one. It's all like the bass pedal is like class A, dis class A B discrete. It's all hand wired stuff. Okay. It's basically turret board inside pedals. Mm. And, uh, you know, guitar players immediately are like tr buying them or like, hey, what's up with guitar stuff? I'm like, we're getting there because I was very particular about the guitar line. Yeah. So after the bass pedal, we finalized the head, which the head is a. Class A, B, discrete, hand wired head. And uh, the way we just, I'm like, how can I sum this up so people like get it right yeah. away? It's, a, it's a, a quad voice, dual channel, all tube head. So, but by channels, it gets a little interesting because each channel, it's its own amp. So it's two amps in one box. Okay. So you have stacked turret boards, um, and you have one, uh, channel one is symmetrical clipping, uh, and channel two is asymmetrical. And I like playing through both because we do uh, at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So you have two amps in one box. Uh, on the worst day, it's 130 watts um, on high power. Low power, we've yeah. done them. We've done them for people at like one watt, half wow. a watt, 60, 50. You know, whatever you want. But um, basically, you can play to two heads at once in this 46 pound, handmade, all discrete. Is it like uh, enclosure? Something that you would like. They interact with each other, the channels do? Like, as yep. you change the base of one, then you have to kind of, nope, not compensate, it's, but... It's, there's some advanced stuff going on there. Okay. Uh, uh, the partner I teamed up with, uh, you know, and just dove into the design and all the development with is uh, my partner, Gary Phillips. Yep. And he has his own company, Overtone Works, and he is, like, 45-plus years designing a lot of secret boxes for a lot of people we, we all know. Yeah. So I'm, on the other hand a recording engineer just like him. We're both touring musicians and we're like, why don't we build something that's very versatile or extremely versatile Yeah. and have it be something that gives you all this, not like, oh, this is it, this is it, this is all you need, have mm -hmm. fun, or that's it, your staple sound that as soon as you strum a chord, people are gonna know what you're using. Yeah. Where this, people are like, hold on, it sounds different. But it, it has a full range. It has uh, extended highs and lows but it's never muddy. You can use two channels. There's no phasing or comb filtering. Okay. It's all very intuitive and simple. Um, all the EQs are push-pull. Okay. So you can get like a modern up-close sound or you can oh. soften the edge and get, um, you know, different overlaps uh, within frequency bands with the mids and the highs. You pull the bass out, it drops an octave. Uh, channel one has this cool option that's a six position aviation switch we put here. and. Uh, so that's, a, that's there's notches. It's not like a yeah. It's a sweep. six. Okay. It's a six uh, six point um, switch. And what's going on with that? So basically, if you start more or less in the middle, you're you're already a bit thicker than most amps. Okay. And you can go down three or up three, and it just gets thicker as you go to the up, and it gets tighter as you go to the bottom. And what's really cool is you can you can start playing right, and uh, depending on your tuning, you can switch the voice switch and you just hear it when there's like this gentle roll off and when it lines up your guitar just goes whoop, right up huh. real clear and what's kind of cool if you're trying to go for something real tight and like you know clean and jangly you can go down you want something warm and buttery go up and for gain you'll get spongier more vintage towards the top okay and then tighter and more you know attacky towards the bottom and you have the gain and the boost that's a huge amount of gain split into two pots you can use both, you know, for if you're playing clean or distorted. There's a lot of range on there. It's mm. pretty crazy. And it's still dynamic. With all our circuits, you can be at crazy high gain and you still have like 60 B like wow. headroom. But it's still intact. It doesn't sound awkward. Mm. But there's movement and expression. And I think that's something that I've noticed the crowds fe uh, feeding off of where you're just playing harder and the amp's just like going with it. Going you. with it. And it's pretty, it's, it's a unique experience. What are the tubes inside of this one? Um, they're all sourced. I don't know if they sell to the general public, but it's ARS okay. on the West Coast. And uh, we asked for a very specific, um, you know, uh, screening process. And like, they're really good with that already. And then once they arrive, we screen them even further. Okay. Because we have certain uh, requirements and certain, uh, 
you know, things that we like things to... Things you're looking for. Exactly, per, you know, for the components. Like, a lot, no, there's no Chinese components. Everything's from the UK, France, uh, Switzerland, Germany. We use uh, oxygen-free silver wire from Japan. There's some Canadian and American stuff in there. Um, so it's the, a good melting pot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's just like, it, there's a lot of beautiful components out there. A lot of companies might look at what we put into these things and, and think we're fucking crazy. Yeah. But yeah, we are, and we're fine with that. <laughs> but what, like, specific, like, is it KT88? Oh, no, EO, uh, EO34. Okay. Yeah, and the, uh, going to the Channel 2, that one is, like, it just really likes lower tunings, and it grips the hell out of them, What's, too. Explain the range now. That's one that I'm not okay. familiar with. So the voice is for channel one. Yep. Range is for both. And range, uh, the best way I could describe the range, it's like an aggressive presence. Um, hmm. I mean, you can play if you're playing mellow or clean as well, but it's like if you're on day six or, you know, whatever tour, and you're like, oh, I, I, could, I could go without changing my strings tonight. Yeah. You can bump that thing up, and you're going to get the new string sound. Huh. And you can actually get it, once you get it to like 3 o'clock or higher, it gets like really, it's like extremely unveiled, you know, if you have old strings. Now, yeah. I have new strings, so I'm under noon. And like most, uh, all the demos and all stuff, people are always like, man, the knobs, are, nothing's maxed out, you know, and all the EQs are like give or take noon. Yeah. And it's, it just really lets the sound of the instrument come through. That's what all the pedals do. And the pedals do. are doing too. Yeah, so it's like you can actually hear your different instrument that you're plugging in. And you hear the, ex it's, it's just very expressive and it's either as clean or as dirty as you want. Cool. And you can make it sound nasty, smooth. Um, the cabs themselves. Uh, I was gonna say cabs and speakers, what's in here? Yeah, so here we're currently developing our own speakers to just really take go like t to ridiculous levels of low end yeah. and right now I have um, some uh, nice uh, set of scumbags that uh, uh, Jim uh, went over his, his spot and I went through every speaker he makes and uh, we found these and he actually called me I was like hey I'm wearing some new ones come back and uh, the, the ongoing theme of the demos was like it every day when I would be there playing with a half sack like shit would be falling from the low end these things produce I'm like I need something that gives more. And he's like, all right. Because he's used to like Marshall guys. Yeah. You know, and that's like, this is a whole nother, it's whatever you want it to be. Yeah. So we ended up with, uh, on the top two here, we have BM55s, which have a really nice mid-range. We have J55s here that have more, uh, it's kind of like a V30, I guess, but it's like smoother, has less of, like, it doesn't have the claw, mm -hmm. and it goes a little deeper. Okay. And then the bottom, I have my favorite set of vintage sturdies out of like six sets of four that I had. Oh, I wow. did a test years ago and I hold on to these. But yeah, they're just designed to have like, you know, more dispersion, be way, way less directional than a, just about any other cab I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually, uh, they're not harsh and uh, they really, f you know, filter out anything that maybe like speakers might have a bit of that you might be like okay i could do a little less like you can actually set your amp flat and you can cruise those knobs and you'll see that it sounds organic mm -hmm. and as hyped as you want but it's very it, it sounds just very real unveiled and it kind of like filters off some stuff because you like a record like sound uh based off what a lot of people have been saying yeah, yeah. and uh, it has a nice tight sub you can get it as tight as you want or you can get it like just pump like glowing with low end <laughs> but it's always projecting and it's energetic and articulate. So that that was something that I took on, you know. I know, it, the, sorry to cut you no, off, no, but no. the last thing was, uh, I know the last record you were kind of really dialed into using ceramic speakers for for recording is, and, and you can hear it. Yeah, <laughs> you can hear the difference in this go around. Yeah, it's very, it's much smoother, it's yeah. silkier. It's not any less aggressive. No. But it's in like 1000% less harsh. I think and it's less. <laughs> <laughs> and is that something that you've kind of? Because I know that you worked with uh, Gary, right? Yeah. Uh, during the process of touring, recording. And yeah. Like, hey, was, this is yep. working. This has got to yep. change. What are yep. some? Of, what's like the biggest thing that over that time period that you didn't see coming, but as the the road may do to you, or a studio microscope might happen yeah. to be, you're like, oh, this has to change. I feel like at first it was uh, a little too. It needed a little bit more. Uh, compression. It was like wide open, um, and it, I needed to have a little bit of the grip. Yeah, that's what I call it anyway. Yeah, the grip. You know, and I would call him. We're on tour, and I'm like, man, this thing is killer, but 
I need to turn it up to a certain point. It was a little more picky, okay. you know, and like different rooms, sizes of room were changing. And I just needed something that's like could work, could give me the perfect sound in every room. And it was just a little more like, uh, I can't explain it other than like open. Okay. And then it just needed a little bit of that nice compression. So we, we redid some stuff. We got um, the voicing of Channel One changed a bit throughout time. It was cool. It was like I'd call after the sets. Yeah. You know, and uh, he, he was just making R&D. notes, taking pictures. So it was like on the road, the, uh, in the studio, in between tours. And by the time we tracked our record, we used the head that Steve's using. Uh, and it was just like all the EQs were like 12 and a half, one. And then a little bit of our dual range boost. And that's the sound of that record through the cabs done. Killer, you know, and this one is a little. It's hot. It's all the cable links inside the head are a little more uh, figured out, a little more refined. Yeah, so the it's like the sound just got like, much, you know, <laughs> like damn. But uh, it's cool, you know. That's that's the oldie. So it's a little like it has like a certain sag and it's a little more distant sounding, which it's cool. I like it. And this is just like right up there. But you can soften it just like that one too. Cool, man. Well, I'm gonna ask you to grab one of your guitars and let's hear sure, some sure. pedals. All right, Jonathan, you got your beautiful guitar on. Let's hear some noise. Okay, so this will just be the head. And the way I have it set now, um, the gain's pretty, uh, you know, I would say at 75% on the head or maybe a little less. And then the pedal, I'm just using it for that extra grime and push. So uh, maybe I can do a test too where like, I dial it back a little bit here and use the pedal. Cool, we'll let's see. hear it. So this is just the amp. And I will... I'll probably just play the amp and then go to the pedal. So it's set just for that little bit of like, so let me see if I turn this guy down. Maybe I'll do something with the less gain on the head real quick. <laughs> So I'll turn this down. It sounds meaty, man. Thank you, dude. So let's see. So how would we get like, let me see what's happening here. Now let me tune that G. The D. Yeah, they say in Florida we have certain uh, places with high humidity. Oh, yeah. The G is an extra pain in the ass. Yeah, welcome to Tennessee. Oh, okay, there we you go. We get humidity, especially in uh, Nashville specifically. Yeah, the uh, I feel like these guitars have been chilling for like two weeks. I don't think know if anybody's even touched an instrument <laughs> since the last tour. <laughs> yeah, the one thing I'll say, the pedals uh, came out because obviously I was something down the line, but anything that you would stick behind in front of this preamp, uh, it really affected it and would thin it out. So we, we just felt that, all right, we have to do something that with such a fat preamp, so yeah. you know, gotta make sure it retains that. You know, dude, gets a little, a little boost there. It's very, it it's very much set to the way I set it for the live show. It's just like this little lift. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's uh, it can do a lot on its own, but I don't, I'm not relying that on just a pedal alone, since I'm not running a clean amp. Yeah. So it's cool that you know you can have it set for. We we had a tour where we were just using clean amps and our fly-in dates, and we'll just plug this in, yeah, and then put this guy, the dual range boost behind it. It's that's a class A discrete, 30 dB boost. So it's it's a clean Dang. boost too. It's like yeah. it's, it's, it's almost, just volume, huh? Yeah, it's really really powerful. But uh, with the amp again, I'm just running it so that it just gives me that little push. You know, when you're playing live, you just want that little reach, but yeah. it might not work for all the parts. You know, having that extra bit of gain. But, um, but when you want it there, it's there. Yeah, it's easy and to access. Some. Yeah, and we have, uh, this is like the limited edition one that's coming out. It's yeah. just same I as the other Tetrafed drive, but it's the, like, the Torch album cover. And then yeah, we have- Yeah, cover. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, Steve's using the regular, the black and blue, and then we have a gold one that uh, 
I don't know, I kind of miss that guy on the pedal board. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see if it wants to behave real quick. Okay, so now we're in tune. So. Yep. So, you know, you can get and if the mids and all the EQs are really powerful. For us, we want a little bit of that fine line between too tight and loose. Yeah. So it's set to like give a little, you mm. know? A little some sag. Yeah, just a bit for it work, you know, for our tuning. I feel like if I set my sounds up playing alone, it'll be a little too tight when we play all together. I have to like loosen it up. So you can hear that like mm -hmm. that nice. You can feel it even too. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> like we we're it's two well, he's a bass player as well, so it's like two touring bass players. It's recording engineers, so we like to feel things, yeah. but not not have it be muddy, you know. Which is a fine line. Yeah, it's it's it, there's a lot of hours that goes into this shit, you know. <laughs> cool. What uh, what else you got working here? Um, let me see. the The boost itself is you got uh, some earthquaker stuff here too. Yeah, yeah. I have um, for like the lead sound, um, I am running the Arpanoid, a bit of that on. The Phase 90 I use for certain tracks. It's a part of the um, the closer on the new record. Um, changes come. Okay. Then I use the Echo Rec as my always on uh, delay, and I use the uh, Avalanche Run as the extra wash and dreaminess. Okay. But to be quite honest, um, I'm actually used to running the effects into the front of the amp. And uh, we're on this tour, I'm using the effects suit because they're like all discreet and all this stuff. Yeah. And they're really great, but I like, I like the raunch. That and provides. we sat down with Gary and we did the shootout and this, this is a better sound because our effects suit, you can do series or parallel. So mm -hmm. you can either completely replace your sound the second the effects are on or you can run them in parallel. So your dry signal, ne that depth and that, that, never that feel that you're the force, yeah. the air, the force. It, it just stays there. The force is always with you. Yes. But um, so I, I use the dual range boost to um, really drive the send um, after my effects loop. Okay. So I'll turn on the effects loop. I have it at a nice blend, and this is like the fine tune. Mm. Um, and then the end. So that's the second to last. And the last thing is this uh, hardwire um, delay looper that I just like do loops on certain parts and play over. Yeah. Or like. You know, at the end of a song, switching over. Is to that like what's going on with times changing? Uh, or times, times missing? missing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle of that song, where it's kind There's of building and building, and then yeah. you're over top of that. Yeah, and that's fun to play live. Okay. Um, so because you know, like, you start off with this, you know, and there comes the master again. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you know, do so ride some, and by the end of the part, just like four or five things happening, and it becomes like and this ambient wall. But I mean, with the effects loop, it might be a lot clearer because I'm not running in. You're not running like a distortion sandwich where it's like overdrive, or you know, or sending it, uh, overdrive effects to preamp distortion, or even just the effects going into the two preamp distortion. Now it's actually that preamp's getting sent in here. And even today, as a part that playing live, I'm always like, mm, don't fuck up. <laughs> and it was like, damn, if you hear things clearer might play it better too. Yeah, you, know? you can respond to that So I was better. like, I was like, don't, I was hoping to not be too revealed. Yeah. But no, it's it's like being in a, in a recording studio and you have like a, a wet and dry. And it's, you know, it, this is a, a true bypass switch to turn on and on, uh, turn on and on. Apparently I'm only on. Uh, <laughs> turn on. the effects on and off. Okay. So it feeds uh, the effects. We, we have a custom cable that comes into the, uh, Arpanoid feeds into the chain, so Phase 90, Echo Rec, Avalanche, Avalanche Run, Dual Range Boost, and then this uh, Delay Looper, and uh, then the output of this uh, gets returned into the return of the amp, and each channel actually has its own effects loop, wow. which you can actually slave out uh, both channels combined, the two heads at once, or each preamp separately, and send that to a power amp Damn. or another amp, so you can run you can multiply your sound. If you're not using effects where you're going to the front end, you can just send that to an SVT, you can send it to another amp, send it to a power amp, send it to like a DI. It's a hell of a tool, man. Yeah, the effects <laughs> matrix is awesome and it's really unique. I mean, all this stuff, we really, we're not just like, not like tribute circuits or anything like that. They're all like, start at 
Start from components scratch. Components and a breadboard, and let's chase it, you know? I think one last question I got for you, Jonathan, is uh, you're kind of very allude to it with the, the mastery bridge, is admission. What, what's going on there uh, what, okay. pedal-wise? So admission is almost like rah, everything. Everything. But um, uh, basically, yeah, it's pretty, the Arpanoid, the Echo Rec, and the Avalanche Run, and the Dual Range Boost. The Dual Range Boost really like amplify, it's the glue. It's like an amazing bus compressor or something. It's, it's like, it compresses as much as it expands and like gives you headroom. It's like this lift. Can we hear, can we hear yeah, you play yeah. admission quick? Or like sure. just a little, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. taste? So basically this is what I do when he, before he counts off, hopefully. <laughs> Everything's and, going and on. And I'll even turn this on. So let's see, I reset the gain on the amp, so we'll see what happens. So fun, you know, like nice and quiet, which is <laughs> it's something new to me. You know, to like we've only been a company for two years, but like that's the idea. Yeah, make it easy, less headaches live. Your sound guy's not like oh shit, or you're like why is the noise louder than my riffs? Or every yeah. time you stop, your your you know your amp is just noisy, which is just we don't we don't deal with that. Yeah, shit. no. <laughs> so even with all that, you know, you turn off and you're good. You're clean. It's that simple, and I could you know, demonstrate also, I guess this is still on, so, you know, like, you know, you would swear, like, and I like hearing the ring back here. Yeah. You know, so do you know I'm not using a gate? I hate gates. No offense to gate makers, but I just, <laughs> I don't, it's an interference. It's like, ugh. It's a neutering of your tone. Yeah, yeah, it's like, there's a, I don't want to have too big a board. I mean, this is my shit. I guess it's growing, but, it's what I need to do. It's your little playground. Exactly, yeah. Well, and I, as long as everybody's happy, I'm happy. Well, yeah. A that's... happy playground of Sonic <laughs> proportions. Safe space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan, yeah. thank hey, you. We're going to breeze man. through Steve's stuff real quick. Awesome. All right, other side of the stage, you are not seeing anything wrong here. <laughs> yes. Actually, Steve went and stepped out to get some food. Yes. Jonathan is apparently no more about gear, so yeah. Steve kindly had <laughs> Jonathan talk about his gear. Apparently, Jonathan, yes. Jonathan, welcome back. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> uh, on this side now. What's about this V? Because I've okay. known uh, Steve to play like ECGs. Yes, kind and of he still does. Exclusively. He still he still does for the bomb string uh, tuning. Okay. So the second half of the set, he goes to his EGC, which he's had for years. Um, this, What's this bad boy? This is a gorgeous flying V by JLM. Hmm. Uh, he's uh, based in. Uh, I want to say he comes out to the Columbus, Ohio, but I think he's in Indiana. I'm not sure. But they're great guitars. Yeah, um, it looks cool. They collaborated. He had um, this really sweet SG made. Uh, that uh, we use on the record, and they're all neck uh, through, so oh, wow. they have this nice, like, chunky sustain and tone, which is fantastic. Really works for our sound. And then uh, Steve always wanted a flying V, so this is kind of like I think like an oversized V or something. And I don't know if it's like the deal with maple or whatever. It looks like a maple top. Yeah, there, right? yeah, it looks like um, maple. But yeah, he does awesome woodwork. This almost looks like some crazy, like, I don't know, dresser from like, yeah, I don't know. Vlad the Impaler's castle or some <laughs> shit. But it's gorgeous, man, and they sound great. It's a great contrast with what I have going on on the other side. Do you know the pickups that are in this I one? think they're just standard Gibson. Oh, okay. Uh, like what you would find in a Les Paul Custom. Maybe 57 Classics or something? Yeah, or I think so. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, eh. But uh, <laughs> he, he likes them. It really works well. Um, I think it helps me set my sound to be less tight, you know? So it's kind of like this nice, warm, uh, flowing riff type of sound where it's just like wow okay you know <laughs> silky thickness and and then well we've already kind of talked about the company but you said this is one of the first amps you yeah guys, yeah that's, your spots here. yeah sure this is uh the original annex mk2 um it's one of the first uh set of like three or four okay and this is the oldie um but yeah this is uh you said no effects loop no effects uh it there is but it's not up to par with mine oh, okay with the new ones that i've all shipped but um, he's going straight in. You can hear a, a little, little bit buzz. of the buzz from the pedals, like most people, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think after this tour, we're going to take it back and uh, to the shop, and we're going to add that effects that I'm using over there for that real silent. Cool. You know, I, we get a kick of that, a kick out of that, where we'll be silent and then we'll just 
fire on and it's just like <sighs> like people have no idea that's coming you know yeah i love that just like the whole dynamic shift uh you can have in a space and just sonically fill it you yeah know? Like, like you can feel the room just like you're taking the air up yeah yeah and <laughs> I, I think that's what we're after with these designs you know and but, same um, cab least in configuration yeah, yeah same cabs um the top cab uh same thing it has the uh, Scum the scumbags. Yep. This cab actually belongs to Eric, our bass player who plays in Wrong, and uh, he. We're on the tour store, and he's like, "I like that cab. I need that cab." So <laughs> we're like, "Hey, uh, can Steve borrow one of your?" <laughs> so this is his. Thank you, Eric. And uh, bottom cab is kind of an array of different speakers. Okay. So, um, but yeah, we're rocking the full sax, um, and it's uh, a cool tonal con uh, contrast because I feel like mine might be a little brighter. Um, and I feel like it's almost like if you were looking at a frequency bands, he probably has a bump maybe a little higher or lower than me, and I'm like right on the other side or something. And you guys kind of choreograph that purposely, knowing that, okay, I, if I, he's here and here? No, no, it's just like what happened, and okay. we're like, oh, wow, that's really good. Because yeah. it stays clear, there's a nice stereo width, um, and it just makes it sound wider, and the room, or on a record, it breathes more because no one, everyone's not living in the same space. Yeah. So, I mean, he runs this, um, yeah, and he's your spots yeah, yeah. Whoop, print. And uh, so he's basically Pretty more of a here. yeah. He's very simple. Um, definitely more of a gear junkie. But I tell him like, hey man, use the Tetrafet for like louder dynamic stuff. You mm -hmm. know, like we have enough gain there, but we don't necessarily. We also like certain stops to be quiet. You know, or like naturally quiet. Yeah. You know, there's a little like lowered. Sometimes because of our tuning, we get like this lower feedback. That's nice. It's like kind of soothing. It's like an overtone. Yeah, it's like a dial tone. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so he just runs the amp, and I can show you that sound. And yeah, then let's hear the amp and then the, the pedal. Yeah, and I feel like the way we played the parts, uh, my pedal is more of a gentle lift or more of a saturation thing, where his I'm anticipating to be a little bit more of a jump. Because I'll be doing like more intentional. Like for whatever reason, I ended up doing a bunch of leads on this record. So, you know, when he kicks in, like it needs to be more like yeah. boom. Because I'm going. Rhythm. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what his uh, rhythm sounds like. Uh, we also set the tone. We, we we set the tone back. Something I didn't mention earlier, to try to get like this extra like warm sound. And maybe we'll, that's where the range on the amps comes in handy. Because you get that bite and that brightness, but there's like a lower tone. Uh, coming off the instrument when you roll back a bit, you know? Is that something you picked up? I know you used to do that with the, when you played bass in the band. You would, yeah. you would do, so it's kind of like you're translating that from yeah. bass to guitar. And Steve has been doing that since like the early 90s too, okay. I think. So I kind of like picked that up off him. And then I, I just think that if you can mess with the tone and the volume easily on a, on a pickup, it really tells you the quality of the pickup, mm -hmm. especially if you can like glide up or down with the the tone it's just like a little bit higher a little lower like you can really feel and hear the quality of the pickup you yeah, know? and probably the combination of that and the pot too because yeah. sometimes pots can yeah. be shit there's some different. great born spots that yeah. I'll on too, like, that are smooth yeah man i have a friend of mine has uh gary actually he has it in a bass uh that he's had since like the 60s Damn. You know? yeah yeah like a 62 jazz bass he's wow. like no need to like doesn't need the deoxid nothing so Tried there's some true. good stuff out there, yeah. yeah. But uh, okay, so we'll hear the you know his regular rhythm sound. Hey, man, his action is really different. I'm a high action guy. He's a low action guy. Yeah, I can guy. hear it. All right. Um, so we'll hear it, and I'll turn this guy on. We'll see the lift or whatever. I think I think Fuck the way man, he, man. <laughs> that yeah. good. So I think I was like, wah, wah. like it's so low for me, and I think I play much harder than him, so it's starting to like really get spongy. But um, yeah, that, I think that's all, all these things that add up, you know, where like he probably plays lighter, and uh, I play harder. Yeah. And the way he has it set, I mean, it really when we're playing together, it, it feels good. But uh, yeah, you can definitely hear like the lift, and uh, he has let's see, he has it set so that. 
The level is at about what, like 10 o'clock? Yeah. Highs one, mids three, base one. So still mid heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's actually like reverse scoop, un unscoot. And I guess with the gain is maybe 10, 10 and a half. And then the shift in the up position gives you full range. And if you go down, it gives you a, a low end roll off, like for soles and stuff. So I'll do that one more time, and uh, I think cool. that's it. Almost like gives it like a almost like a wah sound, like a cocked wah. Like yeah, really. That, that that EQ is very uh, intuitive as to like how you have your tone set, how you're playing. Like even now playing lighter that second time, yeah. it's less of the smush, you know? Yeah. I think he has he has a, a lighter hand than me. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's and then he also uses the Just carbon the copy, two, yep. which Simple man, delay. for him it works fucking great. It always yeah. like makes me want to try one, and I might after this tour, but I don't know. I, uh, I've tried in the past, I was like, that's cool. I like what Steve gets out of it yeah. for me. Mm. But uh, just the MXR yeah, Phase 90. The Phase 9, the classic. That's, he's, yeah, he, he makes it work and he gets some great sounds. And uh, yeah, it's all he needs. And Sometimes. he's also singing, so yeah, <laughs> a little less to worry about. Yeah, but I think he gets some really cool sounds out of here. Add some texture, some depth, and uh, yeah, he uses this. And then I'll show you the EGC real quick. Killer, yeah. Last mm. but definitely not least, we got to give some love to Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's been great to us for years. Um, once I got, ugh, I'm really bad with model numbers, but I think it was a Series Two bass. Mm -hmm. It's what we currently use. It's been on all the records since we got it. Um, I don't know. I, I never even bought another bass like Didn't I was just to. like and never had a backup or any of that shit but uh Steve's had this one for a while you he, can tell it's beat to hell yeah man and it's still you know just as great as it ever was it's a fantastic thing you gotta love to sustain the pickups and the bridge mount onto the neck uh tonally it has that extra low end yeah kind of just the resonance and uh, this undertone that just stays with you no matter where you're at on the neck um it has a Extra body, extra bite. Um, it just has more of everything, in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, he has his unique uh, neck profiles. And this really, uh, really comes out uh, when we go into the heavier stuff and it just increases the depth. Yeah, you know, everyone's, you know, that much lower. And the, the pedal, the Tetrafet pedal, it actually really brings out the sonic character. Like, it's like a magnifying glass of whatever you're putting through it. So it really just gets gnarly, heavy, and crushing. You really hear like as much crackle on as low end as you dial in with that thing. And uh, because it's uh, it's like it's like 90 dB of gain. It's like insane. We really don't crank them too much. No. But it's really just like gives you more, more gain, more forwardness. But it also grips everything you're putting into it. Just becomes more forward and clearer. Hmm. So like it just really pushes the sound outward, in a sense. And uh, it helps, you know, with low tuning because things yeah. can get like lost and smushy. So yeah, this is, uh, I guess, uh, Steve's bomb string guitar. And yes. I believe, I don't know what it is here. It is number 292. Yeah. And he put his name there. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a cool, it's, I mean, we were, we, uh, aluminum's kind of been a theme, you know, for certain guitars in the band. And uh, it's, it's, they've, they've definitely stood the test of time. Yeah. You know? Right on, Jonathan. Hey. Well, thank you for not only going over your gear, but going over Steve's Absolutely. gear. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. This is everyone. Hey. This is Chris Keys. We're Cheers. Guitar with Jonathan from Torch. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you, guys.